welcome to Archives Live. We're doing it a little bit of a different way today, so forgive me. <laughs> I'm just trying to get situated here. I'm doing it on a computer upstairs rather than downstairs on my phone with the ring light and all that fun stuff. Um, so I am upstairs because today is a snow day and we wanted to ensure that you still have your Archives Live fix, but that we still can serve the public upstairs. That simple. Um, if you can hear this, give me a thumbs up. That would be great. And of course, if you can um, go ahead and give us a like, a little heart, say hi, I would appreciate that all very much. So I'm going to go ahead and say hi to you guys. So this is a little bit different for you today. We'll see how we like it because maybe I'll do it like this way in the future. So hello. Okay, perfect. Um, as you know, Archives Live. We do it every Thursday at 2.30, and we like to focus on local history. We usually play a game. Today we're not going to be doing that, but we generally go over topics that have to do with Cochrane and area. When I say Cochrane and area, I do not mean Iroquois Falls. I do not mean Smooth Rock. I mean Cochrane and the districts, you know, the district areas around it. So unorganized townships. Um, we do sometimes go further up north, James Bay Coast, so we deal with Moose Knee and whatnot. Uh, those things. If you have an archives request, you can, of course, go ahead and submit it to us in a few different ways. I'll give you a few of those ways. One of them is you can drop by the library at 178 4th Avenue here in Cochrane. You can give us a call at 705-272-4178, and that will allow you to tell us, discuss the whatever your request might be. You can visit our website, www.cochranepubliclibrary.com, and click on the services tab. Once you're there, you can click on archives, and archives will then uh, give you all the information that we have, everything that we do, as well as archival forms that you request information. The other thing you could do, we could do snail mail. <laughs> so again, you can um, send us mail in the regular post, uh, 178 4th Avenue, Cochrane, Ontario, P0L1C0. And lastly, you can always, always email me at artis, A-R-D-I-S, at CochraneOntario.com. And I'm going to go ahead and type that in here because it's a little bit easier to do that. Um, so you're going to have it in the comment box. Again, if you're watching this right now, please go ahead and give me a heart or a thumbs up. And if you're having any difficulty with hearing or anything, let me know if it's sounding okay. Because again, we're using a different platform today. Um, I would definitely like to hear from you. Now, now that I have that all out, if you have archives requests that are currently in, I am working on them, and I'm going to be working on them again tomorrow as well. Hopefully I get some information to you. I'm sorry about the little bit of a delay, but with Mother Nature out there wreaking havoc, that gives us a little bit of issue here and there. Um, if you have any questions at any time, you're okay to go ahead and put them in the comment box, and I will put my spectacles on so that I can see. Um, I might have to help at some point if it gets too, too busy upstairs. But yeah, I wanted to show you some cool stuff today. Now we're going to see, is it going to invert it on me? No, it's not. Yay! Um, I have this wonderful little history that some people will probably have at home, but we have two of them now. One of them is cataloged upstairs. You can take it out with your library card. And if you are interested in um, just researching the, the cert, you know, about the Anglican Church, here we go. Very, very interesting. Got a nice little picture going on there. And <laughs> it's got some pretty interesting tidbits. So this was first published and written in November 1985 by Gwyneth M. Shirley. The second edition was revised February 1997 by Gwyneth M. Shirley. And uh, then we also have Anne Shirley Bragg, who also helped with it. And it was the 50th anniversary celebration of the Archbishop Anderson Memorial Church. So that's all in there. Sorry about the lighting, folks. Okay, so the there is some really interesting bits in here <clears throat> that I think you guys would like. So if you have any questions or if I'm going too, too fast for you, go ahead and just let me know in the comment box and we'll go from there. Awesome. So the first service was held on Lake Commando Shore. The first church arrived in 1909. Church was diocese seat in 1913. Uh, town avoided during typhoid outbreak. Uh, Joseph Blackburn, the missionary. Okay, so these are some of the things. Hi, Jill. You have a good day as well. 
Uh, Woodall, an inspirational preacher, new church opened in 1947. Then there is Reverend H.V.R. Short, dedicated Anglican priest. Church consecrated February 8th, 1970. Then we have many pastoral changes in the 1970s. A time for change in the Anglican Church. A church has a glorious past, promising future. Stained glass memorial windows. So those are the contents of this. Um, is there anything there that you might be of interest to, to know of? Go ahead and type it and I can try to get to that section for you. Um, there is a picture here of Archbishop John George Anderson. So I'll let you guys have a look. I'm sorry this is not going to be the clearest just because it's a webcam today. Hi, Daniel. Okay. Awesome. So let's have a look at the stained glass memorial windows, okay? So this is a history of the Anglican Church again. We're, we're going over this. And stained glass memorial windows. Collectively, these windows are the most outstanding examples of workmanship in the whole of Northern Ontario. Each one tells a story on, religious and, uh, on a religious and local level. The large window above the altar is entitled The Good Shepherd and was brought from the old church. It is in memory of Otto Thorning, the first editor and publisher of the Cochrane Northland Post. On the north side of the altar, a window in memory of Myra... <laughs> I'm going to get this name wrong because you know me, guys. You know me by this time. I, I have a pronunciation problem here. Myra... Myrtle Macaulay portrays Mary Magdalene of the tomb, greeting her risen Lord with the words, Ramadi Master, on the south side of the altar, a window in memory of Francis and Arthur Stevens vividly depicts the, the scent of Christ on the cross. So those are those two. Sorry about mispronunciation of names. I am not good at these. Um, <laughs> so in the name of the church on the north side, the first three windows portray the tender scene that could be entitled suffer little children to come on to me come on to me this window is in memory of beloved wife of mabel palangio the center window is in memory of annie violet wife of archbishop anderson it shows christ celebrating um, and then the third window has a rather unusual design shows moses at the foot of mount sinai holding one of the stone tablets upon which is inscribed the ten commandments the story goes that Morris Dubé, a Jewish businessman in Cochrane, tried in vain to find a solution to the certain theology question. In 1948, the Anglican rector of the Holy Trinity was able to give him the first satisfactory answer. As a result, he presented the window to the church in memory of his first wife, Mindel Dubin. So that's kind of interesting so far. Hope you guys are enjoying this a little bit. Um, on the south side of the nave of the church, a brightly colored window in memory of Estad and Frida Shemandi portrays a scene in a major at the birth of Christ. In the center of this wall is a window in memory of Edward James Shirley and Myra Ann Crone, the parents of Russell Edward Shirley. The window is entitled The Light of the World and is a reproduction of the famous painting by Holman Hunt. What interesting ob observation concerning this window is that the lamb Christ holds always seems to glow with light even though all the windows are in shadow. So that's different. The last window on the side of the church is in memory of Russell Edward Shirley and his wife Ella Louise Thorning. It is a picture of St. Giles and by some authorities as a patron saint of woodcutters. This window was regarded as a fitting memorial to Mr. R. E. Shirley whose work was connected with forest products. The windows in the baptistry are in memory of Alice Marwick. The double window portrays the appearance of the angel Gabriel to the Virgin Mary. The window is entitled, Lord, now, lest thou, thy servant depart in peace, and shows Simon holding uh, Christ in his arms. So this was all compiled by someone else. I'm just reading it. This is not me setting in stone here for you, but that is kind of the history of those windows. That is very interesting for sure. So what else do we have in here that you guys might find of interest? We're going to have a quick look at it. The first service held on Lake Commando Shore. So this has always been of interest. I've had quite a few different requests from it. It is covered in a few different texts that we have. And I say a few because there are several that are in archives as well as our local history section that go on in length about um, 
kind of the campground around Lake Commando and when the first church service apparently was held. So this says first service held on Lake Commando shore. Again, all of these are different histories taken from different people and you can put them together and either there's the comparison fairly close or there are some things that are very different. Just take it as it be that this one is from the Anglican Church history. To trace the history of the Anglican Church in Cochrane, it would be wise to briefly trace the origins of the town itself. Cochrane first became directly linked to the rest of Canada when the Temiskaming and Northland Ontario, sorry, Northland Northern Ontario Railway, now the ONR line, was from Inglehart, uh, constructed to Cochrane in 1908. But long before Commando Indians used to hunt, trap, and pitch their tents along the shores of the chain of lakes they called Little Lakes Camping Ground, Cochrane lay astride a path of the old packet trail to Moose Factory. The rich furs of the Hudson's Bay regions were transported south by canoe in summers and in the winters by dog sled along the Moose and Abitibi rivers. Hey, Janet! Um, as early as the summer of 1905, a railway survey crew had painfully hacked its way from Inglehart. They located marker of the previous survey crew, camped briefly overnight at Lake Commando, and then, tortured and almost driven mad by mosquitoes and black flies, thankfully returned south. I feel like this is tourist season. <laughs> the mosquitoes get the southerners and they take off. Um... All this activity had not gone unnoticed by the native people, the silent watchers of the changing scene. Early in 1908, three young Indian packers, so indigenous, uh, returning north, north along the old Hudson Bay Trail, brought some surprising news to Robert Redison, the resident of the Ang <laughs> resident Anglican Miss Minish <laughs> I can't English today. I'm really sorry about this. The resident Anglican missionary at Moose Factory. The man was later to become Bishop of Moosonee and Metropolitan of Ontario. He was frequent uh, and very fluent in the Ojibwe culture and Ojibwe language and had conquered the Cree language in three short months. Now he listened in amazement to the Indigenous people as they described the presence of many white men in tents at Little Lake's camping ground. There was, as yet, no word in Cree for train. But by whistling and making puffing sounds, they indicated that the railroad was coming. So again, it would be something that was unseen. People didn't understand what a train was. And why would there be a word for something that didn't exist in a language, right? Um, that kind of just makes sense. If you, I'm sure at one point there was no word for computer in Cree. Like I'm, I'm sure there isn't, just there wasn't because it didn't exist, right? Uh, Robert Redison was consumed by, with curiosity. He had not seen a white man for years, apart from the few around James Bay. He immediately decided to investigate. The journey might have imitated any other man, but in 1898, at age 23, he had arrived to Moose Factory after covering an incredible distance of 1,000 miles by Birchmark Canoe, with the last 100 miles on foot. This time, he set out on snowshoes with a sturdy dog team and a good indigenous guide. It was February, bitterly cold, the temperature of minus 50. They had roughly 200 miles to cover one way, so they traveled light and lived off the land. This journey was to become legendary, often retold to children and grandchildren. On February 6th, 8, 1908, they arrived at Little Lakes Camping Ground, located at the National Transcontinental Railway Crew. Next day, Robert Redison conducted the first religious service ever to be held in the infant town of Cochrane. There was no large tent enough to hold the men, so they gathered in the open air around the shores of Lake Commando. The steep sloping banks formed a, naturally, a natural nature gallery under the great blue vault of a sky, a perfect outdoor church for all male congregation. We now know that it was a sunny day, probably one of the very mildest ones, when we are fooled into thinking that it was the worst, when we were fooled to thinking that the worst of winter was over. After the service, still full of curiosity, Robert Redison continued his journey on snowshoes down the trail to the McDougal Chutes, now Ma called Matheson. So that is the story of the first church service around Lake Commando in 1908, when we were technically not even called Cochrane yet. Yay! Pretty interesting, right? <laughs> 
So this book is still chock full of information that you would probably be very interested in looking at and reading about. And it's also got tons of great pictures from different years of service, of patrons, of people who have gone to the Anglican church and served the church. So this is available. You're able to borrow it with your library card. Drop by the library Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturdays 10 to 2 and you can take this out and have a good read and enjoy it. Now, here we go. Some of you might have heard me talk about this book before. It's called Come On Over, Northeastern Ontario A to Z. And the reason why I'm talking about it again is because we're in the middle of, um, they have, the author has gone ahead and asked us if we would like to revise some stuff about Cochrane. And I'm going through and I'm having a quick look at it. There are some details that do need to be kind of tweaked. Um, but if you think of anything that you, you might be interested in, you know, wanting added to a book about, this is all about Northeastern Ontario. But if there was something that you're like, hey, Cochrane's known for this, not just polar bears. If you think of any of that stuff, go ahead and drop me a line and I will definitely try to include it in the revisions that I send them. Um, oh, hi, thank you very much. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um, so if there are some things that you're like, hey, maybe they don't know in Cochrane that we do this. Um, you know, maybe they don't know very much about the Snowmobile Museum and it needs to have a bigger role in here. Maybe we need to talk more about the community gardens or certain clubs or you know, maybe there's something that I'm completely missing. Maybe we want to include New Post Falls, some of the out, outer area of Cochrane in here as well that people wouldn't think of. The Fire Memorial. Anything you can think of at all, just go ahead and drop me a line. My email address is in the comments, so go ahead and have a look there. And if you have any questions, again, feel free to write them there and I'll try to, try to answer anything to the best of my ability. Um, yeah. Huh. I feel like I, I can't wait until there's actual people that can come to archives and we can have these conversations. I enjoy doing these videos and these live streams for you guys, but it's not the same as having someone in front of you to have a conversation. <laughs> um, I'm glad you're enjoying the information. Thank you so much for all those encouraging comments in the comment box. I am going to cut it a little bit short today if there's no questions. I'll just wait a couple minutes to see if there are. In the meantime, I'll tell you again the different ways that you can contact the library if you have an archival request or you just want to search something. You can do it in a few different ways. So again, you can stop by the library at 178 4th Avenue. You can get a request form from us right in person and do it right there. You can call us at 705-272-4178. You can talk to myself uh, or someone else and they can take your request down. You can visit our website, www.cochranepubliclibrary.com, click on the services tab, click on archives, and then you're going to see all the information about archives. There are a few really cute pictures there, I'm just saying. Uh, the birth, marriage, death index is there. There is a filing index. Uh, we try to keep everything relatively up to date as time permits, so bear with us there. But you can put your request that way. Lastly, you can always email, and you can email me at artists, A-R-D-I-S, at CochraneOntario.com. Again, it's in the comment box, so have a look there. If you really enjoy these episodes and you are really avid history buff, I, I applaud you. Thank you. Thank you. If you would like to see more of these, you can always visit our YouTube channel. We have a whole playlist chock full of content for the last two years. Can you believe that? Two years already? We're going into 2022. We are going to have uh, a few of the archives live for the next few weeks. Um, they are pre-recorded, but they're great because they're showing you stuff about Cochrane. And I have great videos that our summer students worked on from the summer. And we go to different locations and see different things. I think you're going to really love those. And I hope you come and view them every Thursday at 2.30 throughout the holidays. And we will be back. I'm just going to see what the actual day is. The 6th of January will be our comeback special in 2022. But until then, we still will have new content for you every Thursday right through the holidays. 
Is it possible to load through this through interlibrary loads? Does that still exist? Of course, interlibrary loads still exist. You are able to, uh, you can request a loan for some of this material. It will show up in the database that um, the librarians use for, it's called VDX for interlibrary loan. And just make sure that some, some material, even though it's available in the library is still considered reference. I don't have a reference, see if there's a reference sticker. So if it has a reference sticker, we likely will not loan it out. There's generally a reason why it's a reference material. Maybe we don't have a lot of copies of it, or it could be really imp important information. This, however, I have a few copies of, so it would go out through ILL easily. So definitely ask your library about borrowing it. And if you are from another library, say you're from Timmins or wherever else in the area down south, yeah, just say, I want to borrow this book. I know Cochrane Public Library has it. They'll search it up, they'll ask us, and we will get it to you. So yeah, good question. Thank you for that. I love it. Okay, so have yourselves a safe weekend. I hope you're enjoying all of that great, delicious, fun, loving winter snow out there. Um, I know I say delicious because I ate half of it while the wind was blowing it in my face while I was shoveling out the front. If you would like to uh, drop by the library, we are open today until 5. We are open on Saturdays now from 10 until 2. Local history section is right when you walk in. We moved it so it's easy and accessible for you. We do have a book sale happening. It's upstairs. You can have a look and do that as well. What else can I say? We have a giving tree for the holidays where you can donate new hats, mitts, scarves, things like that. It can be knitted stuff. And we're going to donate it to community people in need and within the community. So you can come drop in and check that out. Silent auction starts next week. Come in, drop in, grab a program calendar. There's some in-person programming as well as virtual. We would love to see you here. Come on out. Um, but of course, with the snow today, be safe. <laughs> have yourself a wonderful weekend guys thank you very much for joining me for archives live a little bit different today and i hope to see all your wonderful comments next thursday at 2 30 p.m until then bye guys